So one of the coolest features in Nova is Vim mode. I'm going to show you how it works today briefly, but also tell you why I think it's one of the better implementations of a Vim mode inside an editor. So let's just get started. We've got a empty document here, and we're just going to write something in. We're in our normal typing mode. This is the normal way to type. Great. To get into Vim mode, we press Command Shift P to go to our command palette, or you can use the menus. Type in Vim, and here we go. We're in Vim mode. We can see we've got our little boxy guy, and we've got a little bar. Get out of there. We've got a little bar down here, which shows our Vim status, which is normal for Vim stuff, but also this bit, which is the thing that I think makes it really cool, which is hints about what you can do. So we've got the modes we can go into, navigation, etc all at the bottom here, and this is context sensitive. And I think this is one of the things that makes this particular Vim mode really good. Because I think if you're learning Vim motions, I'm by no means any sort of Vim expert. I do it very, very occasionally. I'm not quick. I'm still kind of learning. Um, but there's a lot to remember. There's a lot of upfront information to take on board, right? They say learn Vim by doing, not by memorizing. But there's, there's a big uh, front-loaded amount of information that you have to get into your head to even get started. You know, it's, it's a long, it's a long road, and I think this kind of helps. And let me show you why. So, where this is context sensitive, if I want to change something, so let's go back. So we've got some navigation keyboard shortcuts here. So I know B is going out to prior word. Let's go back to normal, okay? And we'll press. We want to change inside here, so we'll press C, and it gives you the things you can do once you're inside this mode. So if I say change. I want to change inside word, C-I-W, Vim, and there we go. And that works across the board with basically everything. It's really cool. It gives you constant hints as to what you're supposed to do next and the things that are available to you. It's not an exhaustive list. It's not everything, but it's a lot. And it's more than enough to give you a little bit of a poke and a reminder as to what to do next if you're lost. It's really useful. I don't know why other softwares don't do this. I've not personally seen it. There might be others that do it. I haven't seen it, but I think this is good. So let's go into a bigger file and we'll talk a little bit about the features that, that work. So if you're a hardcore Vim person, you probably know way more about this than me, so I'm not gonna pretend I'm any sort of expert, but there's a list on the uh, Nova website, I'll link in the description, which says the features they support. And the main ones are things like everything listed here, right? but also things like counts. So if I want to go to line five, there's a thing inside Vim. So if I press G, it'll take me to the beginning of the document. If I press double G, it'll take me to the start, sorry. Shift G for a capital G, will take me to the end. So if I press GG, I'll go back to the start. But if I press two, Shift G, it'll take me to the second line. If I want to get to this line here, 24, I can press two, four, and we can see this turns up over here. Shift G, that'll take me to line 24. So counts work for everything. So if I go back a word and I want to go back up to, I don't know, whatever, back two words, I can press 2B and it'll go back two words, right? B2, 2B, there we go. All that kind of stuff works. Um, the more deep Vim features don't work um, and wherever there is existing functionality inside Nova, it defaults to the Nova way of doing things rather than the Vim way because it's not Vim in Nova, it's a Vim binding mode inside Nova and it's uh, fairly comprehensive. But things like if you press forward slash to search or you know, the little command menu by pressing um, colon, that sort of stuff doesn't work. That's very Vim centric. And a lot of those things exist. You're in a visual editor that doesn't necessarily, you know, there's other ways to do things. You have a command palette, for example, which most like command line editors do not have, right? So it's a, it's a mixture. You have to kind of play with it a little bit to get a feel for it. But um, those are kind of the basics and things like you know, if we're doing more line stuff, so it looks like a GG or shift G to go down the file, control G inside Vim uh, will bring up a go-to line. And that's the same here, apart from we don't have the Vim thing, we have the, the inbuilt Nova shortcut defaults to the same thing as Vim. So it still works the same way, you just get the, the Chrome you get around the interface, which is kind of to be expected because you are in a visual interface versus if you want to use Vim, you'd use Vim, right? So, it's, uh, it's a mixture of things, and various bits and bobs work um, independently of whether or not you're in Vim mode or not, which is quite nice. It feels quite well designed. But uh, yeah, this list is not comprehensive. And I think that's one thing where, and, and you've only got so much horizontal space here, I get it, but um, there are things, I wouldn't use this as, as your, your sole means of learning Vim <laughs> motions, but 
um, as a reminder for everyday things, it's it's really useful. It's really useful to have a little list here because, like I said, I am not good at this. I'm not trying to make I am good at this. I suck at this, but it's good to have this little hint down here and it all works really nicely and really smoothly. Panic don't do a good job of <laughs> showing people these features um, and there's loads of other cool things inside Nova, uh, but this is just one of my favourites. Anyway, that is the end of the video, I think. Should be. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, bye.